What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Neuro Sketch with Dr. Kenny. But if this is the first time you've seen this channel, don't forget to subscribe. Today we're going to discuss the internal thoracic artery, and without further ado, let's get started. The internal thoracic artery is also called the internal mammary artery, and it's called mammary artery because it supplies the breast. But why internal? Because we're expecting to have the external mammary artery. Remember, we discussed the branches of um, axillary artery and one of which was the lateral thoracic artery. The lateral thoracic artery was considered as the external mammary artery and the internal thoracic artery is now the internal mammary artery. The internal mammary artery is, uh, is coming from the first part of subcutaneous artery just a few centimeters after the uh, formation of the subcraven artery and remember the subcraven artery is coming from the brachiocephalic trunk on the right side we have two internal mammary arteries one on the right and one on the left and they are all coming from the first part of the subcraven arteries um, so they descend few uh, one to two centimeters lateral uh, to the sternum on either sides because we have one on the right and one on the left these are the two internal um two internal uh, mammary arteries as you can see this is the view from anterior like we are viewing from anterior but this the view from inside the anterior wall this is the anterior chest wall this is the anterior chest wall and i'm viewing the anterior chest wall from outside but if i want to view the anterior chest wall from inside now no i'm taking the anterior chest wall and i'm viewing it from inside this is what i see um so this is the internal mammary uh artery or the internal thoracic artery and it lands it always almost always lands with the internal thoracic internal thoracic vein internal thoracic internal thoracic vein the internal mammary artery is found in the anterior chest wall deep within muscles deep within intercostal muscles but it's between it's actually between the intercostal muscles and the membrane we have a membrane here which is a deep fascia deep um deep fascia of the anterior chest wall this ma this is that this is an artery here the the internal thoracic artery on the left side because this is the view from the left side and you can see it is between the mem the fascia this fascia and the anterior chest wall but to be to be precise it lands between the internal intercostal internal intercostal muscle and the transversus thoracic muscle we discussed this in anterior chest wall the internal thoracic artery it lands between the internal intercostal and um and the transversal transversal thoracic muscle but it is covered by a fascia so that if you want to go in a dissection if you want to go to see the internal mammary artery internal thoracic artery you first of all have to remove the fascia to be able to see uh, to be able to see this to see this artery uh, as it, the, the internal mammary artery supplies almost the entirety of the anterior chest wall it descends from the first part of the subcraven artery uh, lateral or by la uh, on uh, either sides of the sternum and as it goes down it gives branches to supply the intercostal spaces in such a way that each intercostal space on the anterior surface uh, it is supplied it is you no know, it receives the two branches from the internal thoracic artery for example uh, this uh, first intercostal space receives the superior branch and the inferior branch intercostal these are the intercostal arteries and in anterior intercostal arteries but also as you're moving down you see we have a lot of branches that are coming from the um, internal thoracic that are coming directly from the internal thoracic artery but oh, it also gives the perforating branches it gives the perforating branches that are perforating the skin to supply sub perforating the muscles to supply the skin of the anterior chest wall the skin of the anterior chest wall let's discuss the branches of the internal thoracic artery or the so-called internal mammary artery the internal mammary artery has got a bunch of branches to begin with we have said you have got intercostal arteries and um, at each intercostal space we have two branches from uh, internal thoracic artery we have two direct branches from the internal thoracic artery uh, for the first six intercostal spaces intercostal space number one through number six you will see we have um branches that are coming directly from the internal internal thoracic artery and we call them the in anterior intercostal arteries anterior intercostal uh both the word anterior intercostal because we have posterior intercostal when you're going to discuss the blood supply of the thoracic wall mm -hmm. this is just the uh, internal thoracic artery yeah so this is um this is the anterior these are the anterior intercostal branches from the internal thoracic artery or the internal mammary artery and i've told you 
it is happening this these branches the, the direct branches of from the internal thoracic artery to the anterior intercostal is happening only for the first six intercostal spaces normally for the first six intercostal spaces but we have said we also have the um, perforating branches we we'll have the perforate some of the branches from the internal mammary artery they are punching the muscles to go to perforate to supply the skin to supply the skin and remember when we do discussion of the breast we said the breast is also supplied by internal mammary artery especially on the medial side and the medial side those branches we said they're called the perforating um we said they are perforating branches from the internal mammary artery but they're supplying the medial side of the breast you call them the medial um, mammary branches the medial mammary branches were the perforating branches of the internal mammary artery and this is the internal thoracic artery that we're talking about today right i promise you at some point we talk about this internal mammary artery and the internal thoracic artery and you'll see every single branch and as it moves again we've seen the anterior intercostal branches these are the anterior intercostal branches that are seen from anterior view um from view from you know uh, front of the chest uh, these are the anterior intercostal but we've seen also the perforating branches the perforating perforating branches internal thoracic artery has got also a very very important branch here is called the pericardiophrenic this branch here is called the pericardiophrenic artery or the pericardiophrenic artery this branch is called pericardiophrenic signifying you know gives a clue of on on on, uh, on how this artery is going to behave this artery is going to supply the pericardium and phrenic the diaphragm this artery is supplying the pericardium as you can see this is the pericardium this is the this is the heart and the outermost layer of the artery is called pericardium and this artery uh, is supplying part of the artery supplying the pericardium but part of it is descending to supply the diaphragm and this is why it's called the pericardiophrenic artery supply the pericardium and the diaphragm but the pericardiophrenic artery you can see it runs uh, it runs together with the uh, phrenic nerve phrenic nerve also supplies i told you the phrenic nerve also supplies the uh, pericardium but it also supplies the phrenic nerve it, it has the motor component that go, that goes to supply the the diaphragm and this is the pericardio uh, this is the pericardiophrenic artery uh, together also we also have pericardiophrenic vein but also we have a nerve here which is a phrenic phrenic nerve that is going to supply the diaphragm that is going to supply the diaphragm lastly at the level at almost the level of the, the sixth intercostal space at almost the level of the sixth intercostal space uh, um, the internal thoracic artery it uh, you know terminates by forming two terminal branches it terminates by forming two terminal branches the first branch is called the musculophrenic artery or the musculophrenic branch and the superior the other branch is superior epigastric artery musculophrenic and superior epigastric at what space at almost a six uh six intercostal six intercostal space um yeah so uh the musculophrenic the musculophrenic see the word musculophrenic has got the muscular component and the phrenic it is called the musculophrenic because this muscle will supply the inter this artery will supply the intercostal muscles intercostal muscles but from the interspace number seven to number eleven i told you from the first six intercostal spaces um the branches the anterior intercostal arteries are coming directly from the internal thoracic artery but that was not happening for the lower intercostal spaces the intercostal space from numbers uh, number seven to number eleven they are re receiving their blood uh, from the musculophrenic artery so these anterior intercostal sp spaces anterior intercostal arteries that are coming to the um that this um intercostal arteries that are supplying the lower seven uh, lower lower five intercostal spaces they are coming from the musculophrenic artery and the musculophrenic artery is one of the terminal branches of the internal thoracic artery why musculophrenic we've seen muscular muscles intercostal muscles but phrenic again the diaphragm so this muscle this artery is supplying is supplying the intercostal spaces as you can see the lower intercostal spaces but also it supplies the diaphragm has got the diaphragmatic uh, part or branch this branch is going to supply the diaphragm and that is musculophrenic 
artery the musculophrenic artery the last branch the last branch is called the superior epigastric artery is one of the uh, terminal branches it's one of the terminal branches of the internal thoracic artery and the superior epigastric it supply epigastrium eh? it supplies the epigastrium epigastrium is this region of the abdomen of here we're going to discuss it when i'm doing the um the anatomy of the abdomen you know the muscles of the abdomen but it supplies almost to the level of the belly button yeah? almost to the level of the belly button somewhere here this is the anti this is a superior epigastric artery and it will anastomose we're going to discuss when we're doing, we're doing the, the anatomy of the abdomen it anastomoses with the superior with the inferior epigastric artery and we're going to see where does the inferior epigastric artery originate but the superior epigastric artery is coming from the internal internal mammary artery in summary we have said uh, the internal thoracic artery supplies almost the entirety of the anterior chest wall from all the way from the clavicle to the level of the bell button here called the umbilicus. Mm, it supplies the anterior to the umbilicus, but it also supplies everything in between, you know, the breast. The breast is found subcutaneous, we've seen it, it, is got, it, it has got no muscles, uh, and also the sternum has been supplied also by the internal internal thoracic what are the structures that are supplied by the internal thoracic artery we have said the breast is supplied but uh we have anterior mid anterior mediastinum here we have the thymus in anterior mediastinum is also part of the thymus is being supplied by the internal thoracic artery but as we are going deep in the middle pericardium we have the pericardium we have seen we have the peri this pericardic or pericardiophrenic artery which is supplying part of the pericardium which lands with the phrenic nerve and the pericardiophrenic vein but we have also seen that the sternum has also been supplied by the internal thoracic internal uh, thoracic artery the internal thoracic artery is also very important and it has got surgical uh, implication and in case of the coronary artery diseases like the coronary arteries get you know blocked or lodged with something the internal thoracic artery can be used as the source of graft you can can be harvested surgically and being uh, used as the you know the bypass to bypass that obstruction i think we talk uh, we'll talk about this when we're doing the anatomy of the heart anatomy of the you no know, vessels of the heart the coronary vessels but the internal thoracic artery also is very very important in cases of coarctation of a, of a yota but i know you don't know anything about coarctation of a yota we discussed the coarctation of a yota but at this point we just know that it can be used as collateral supply in coarctation of a yota we have a coarctation of a yota but don't worry about it just you have a hint of um a hint of uh, you know coarctation of i mean coarctation of a yota that the internal thoracic artery can be used in coarctation coarctation of a yota all right guys this is what i had for you today but as always if you have a question addition or comments you can always always put your uh, put your thoughts in the comment section but um if this is the first time you've seen this channel don't forget to subscribe to keep in touch we we'll have instagram and youtube um instagram and tiktok account that you usually post um relevant things and don't forget to swing by and see you next time